Every project is made better by adding LEDs. But you can't add an LED without something to limit the current, like a current limiting resistor. In this round of add ohms, we're going to talk about how resistors and LEDs work and why you need to use them together. Caution. Viewer discretion is advised. Components were harmed in the making of this video. When a voltage is applied to a resistor, a certain amount of current will flow through it. The amount is defined by Ohm's law, which is going to be covered in more detail with another video. For now, let's look at this example. If you put 10 volts across a 10 ohm resistor, one amp of current will flow. So remember, the amount of current flowing through a resistor is calculated as voltage divided by resistance. LEDs, on the other hand, work a little bit different. A key parameter of all diodes, including LEDs, is their forward voltage. This is the voltage required for the LED to become conductive. Basically, what this means is that no current will flow through this LED until at least that much voltage is present. Here are three things to know about LEDs and diodes in general. Number one, the forward voltage is the maximum voltage the LED will drop. Number two, if less than the forward voltage is applied, no current will flow through it. And number three, when the forward voltage is applied, the LED effectively becomes a short circuit. For example, if we look at the data sheet for this blue LED, we can see that its forward voltage is around 3.2 volts. Let's put that LED into a circuit with a voltage source and a 470 ohm resistor, as well as a couple of multimeters. Um, you know what? This would be so much easier if I just show you real actual hardware instead of try to draw it all. So let's go to that. Okay, much better. These fancy boxes are called benchtop multimeters. They perform a variety of measurements, but today we're interested in current and voltage. The top meter will monitor the voltage drop across the LED, while the bottom is measuring the current through the LED. Instead of a battery, we're using this bench power supply to provide the voltage and current to the circuit. As we take the voltage from 0 volts up to 1 volt, nothing much exciting is happening. The current is practically 0, while the voltage drop across the LED is about the same as the voltage of the supply. It's basically acting as an open circuit right now. When the supply gets close to 3 volts, the LED suddenly turns on with some blue light because it's letting current flow. If we keep going to 5 volts, the voltage across the LED changes a little bit, but not a whole lot. It's still about 3 volts. Well, the LED is dropping its forward voltage of about 3 volts, while the resistor gets the rest of the supplied voltage. Ohm's law is taking over the circuit, and the resistor is acting as a current limiter for the LED. Alright, maybe you don't believe me right now. So let's take a look at what happens when the resistor is removed. We took the LED out and now are going up to one volt like we did before. Nothing is going on and no current is being drawn. As we go up to two volts, still nothing's happening yet. But as we get close to three volts, which is near the forward voltage of the LED, it turns on and draws about five milliamps, which sounds like a small amount, right? Well, let's keep going to five volts. At this point, we see it starting to draw almost 140 milliamps. This is where we have to be careful because without a current limit, the LED is drawing lots of current. Let's see what happens when, oh, wait, never mind. The LED died. In fact, it's melted internally and now is a dead short. Before ending, I do need to mention that current limiting resistors aren't the only options for LEDs. Another method is to use a constant current source. This is a type of source that will change its voltage to achieve a preset current output. Examples include this modified LM317 circuit, and another example is the chip from TI called the TLC5940, which is a constant current PWM driver, which is very commonly used to drive LEDs. In a future video, we'll take a look at how these constant current sources work, but for now, check out the show notes for some more information. For tools related to calculating current limiting resistors, links mentioned in this episode and downloadable versions of this video, visit the show notes at adohms.com slash epa. 
You can also send us questions via Twitter, our Facebook page, or leave comments with this video. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel.